It was about when I went to Florence, Italy and saw the statue of David. I love the statue of David. It's one of the greatest things. If you ever see in person, go see it. But that's not what really stood out to me when I saw the statue of David. What stood out to me was when I walked into the front door. There's a hallway. And there are arches that go way back into the wall on each side of the hallway. One here, one here, one here, one here. And you have to pass every one of those arches. And inside each of those arches is a block of stone. And in that block of stone, you'll see chisel marks. The chisel marks of Michelangelo. And those single blocks of stone might have an arm coming out of it, a foot coming out of it, a head coming out of it, and these were his incomplete creations with his chisel marks on them. But as you walk through the hall, as you get to the last arch, the room opens up and you see an 18-foot, 20-foot statue of David. It's huge. You look up and you see one stone turned into this masterpiece. And I started to think about how that is like sanctification. How as we go through life, God's taking his stone that we are, and his chisel marks are on us, and he's changing us, and slowly glorifying us to be that masterpiece. And then I started thinking about scars, and wounds, and those things that happened to us over the years that hurt us, that leave a mark. And started to wonder what that meant. And maybe, just maybe, those scars and wounds are used as God's chisel marks to make us more like Christ. When I saw Proverbs 20, 30, it says, Blows and wounds cleanse away evil, and beatings purge the inmost being. And I started thinking about that. Then I read this, and I want you to hear this. Isaiah 49, 8 through 16. I'm not going to read all of it. Thus says the Lord, in a favorable time I have answered you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you, and I will keep you. I will keep you. But then going forward, verse 14. But Zion said, this is the response, The Lord has forsaken me, and the Lord has forgotten me. That's the response to God saying he is coming for them to save them. But God, you've, I'm forgotten. You've forgotten me. I'm not worth it. I'm not worthy of your love. I'm not worthy of your grace. And the Lord answers, can a woman forget her nursing child and have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget, but I will not forget you. That's what he says to the people who say, I'm not worth it. He says, yeah, you're not, but guess what? I'm not going to forget you anyway. That's amazing grace. But the most beautiful thing about that is the next part. But I want you to go to John 20 in your mind. You remember doubting Thomas? Thomas wasn't there when Jesus showed up, was he? And then Jesus shows up eight days later and he says, look at my hands. Now here's a silly question. Why did Jesus keep the scars on his hands? You ever thought about that? Wouldn't it be more powerful for him to get rid of those scars, those chisel marks? He kept them. Why? The next verse that I just read says, I will not forget you back in Isaiah 49. He says this, Behold, I have inscribed, I have carved, I have chiseled, that's what it means in Hebrew, you in the palm of my hand. Your walls are continually before me. That was a prophecy. When he saw the hands of Jesus, Jesus says, I have inscribed your name on these hands. I have inscribed your life on these hands. I have inscribed your scars on these hands. I have inscribed your sins on these hands. You are ever before me. I will save you to the uttermost. Even if you are not worthy, I will save you through my amazing grace for my glory. His hands, your name. Oh, how he loves you and me.